In this video, I will explain how we can write the four Maxwell's equations in tensor notation. I'll try to explain this as simple as possible. Before we start, I want to make sure that you know the vector notation. This is the four space vector x to the mu, which each element represents one of the space-time dimensions. So this index mu varies from 0 to 3. And it's easier for us human to understand when we define the dimensions spatially. So the time dimension will be multiplied by the speed of light. So it's also expressed as another spatial dimension. We could also have a four derivative vector like this. So each element is c dt, dx, dy, and dz. And how are we using these vectors? As an example, say we have a four vector A, which consists of four components like this. Uh, by the way, the last three terms are the spatial vectors, which could be expressed like this. A arrowed, which you probably all know. We also call this three vector. So say we are taking the derivative of this four vector then this is just the partial derivative. There's a c in front of the first term because our first element of the derivative vector was c dt, remember? Now here, the three actual spatial terms correspond to the divergence of the vector, right? Divergence in physics is just a spatial derivative. So in the end, we can leave the first temporal term as it is and combine the other three terms into one expression like this divergence of the three vector a so this could be the answer now let's get into the topic you all know these four maxwell's equations right today we will see how these four equations can be combined into just these two equations this is the two maxwell's equations in tensor notation tensors are these two f and g which have two indices on top right mu and nu and this one is just a vector j because it has only one index that is the difference between the tensor and a vector tensor has multiple indices so more than one index and vector has just one index so we have these two tensors the first one is called field tensor. Uh, e are the electric fields and B are the magnetic fields, by the way. So these tensors are also called electromagnetic tensors. And mu corresponds to the row of the matrix. Nu corresponds to the columns of the matrix. Okay. So as an example, F21 is this element. From here, 0, 1, 2, and then 0, 1. So 2, 1, which is minus B sub Z. I hope you got the idea. So Maxwell's equations in tensor notation. Let's look at the first equation. To investigate the first equation, we'll need this field tensor but we'll also need the four current factor. And of course, as you can see, it could also be written as C rho comma the three vector J. I'll keep them in that corner. We studied this equation by first plugging the numbers for mu. As I mentioned previously, mu will go from zero to three, okay? So let's look at when mu is equal to zero. The left hand side of the equation will be expanded like this, where we have mu equals to zero in every term and nu is varied. And all terms are added because this is just a partial derivative, right? Now let's look at our first term. It's df00. f00 corresponds to this one, right? And dx0 is a temporal derivative, so we'll have this, 
1 over c d0 over dt. The next one is f01 over dx1. f01 is the x component of the electric field divided by the speed of light. dx1 is just a dx, so we have it here. We'll have the rest two components in a similar way. Now you see that the first term is gone and we only got the three spatial derivatives. And what was this again? The divergence of the electric field. And we have one over C at the front still. So this is the left hand side of this equation when mu is equal to zero. The right hand side of this equation is quite simple. We only got the index mu, right? So mu naught, by the way, this mu naught is a permeability of free space, not the index mu, so don't get confused. Mu naught c rho, because c times rho was the first element of the four current factor, right? So now combining the left and the right hand side, we'll obtain this expression. And if we move 1 over c to the other side, it'll become mu naught c square rho. And according to this definition, we can simplify it as rho over epsilon naught. Epsilon is a permittivity of free space. Therefore, we finally obtained this nice looking expression and doesn't it look familiar? This is in fact the first Maxwell's equation the Gauss's law, right? So this equation with mu equals to zero gives us the first Maxwell's equation. This is getting interesting now. Let's take a look at when mu is equal to one now. So just as before, I'll have mu equals to one in all the terms and simply varying the new because new is just a partial derivative. Which one is F10? It's this one, right? Minus E sub X over C. So we have it here. F11, as you can see, is this one, zero. So zero here. And the rest two are the Z component and the minus Y component of the magnetic fields from here. So in the end, we'll have these three terms left. Let's look at the right hand side. Mu is equal to one. So the right hand side is simply mu naught times X component of J. You could pause the video for a moment and try to obtain the other two cases when mu is equal to two and mu is equal to three. You'll see that we'll have these similar looking equations. So let me show the results in a nicer way. These were our left hand side and these were our right hand side and these were equal. Look at these three left-hand side expressions as together. Didn't you notice anything? dBz over dy minus dBy over dz minus dBz over dx plus dBx over dz dBy over dx minus dBx over dy. This is the curl of the vector from linear algebra. This means we can combine all these three equations into one single equation like this. Take a moment and see if this makes sense. So we have just obtained the following expression which is precisely the fourth Maxwell's equation which is also called Ampere's law. So this first equation in tensor notation was the first and fourth Maxwell's equations combined. You can now guess what the second equation is. 
This equation is homogeneous, like 0 on the other side, so it should be much simpler. For the second equation, we'll just need the dual tensor I just showed you before. Alright, let's look at mu equals to 0. Of course, we'll have it expanded like this, because this dx nu is for the partial derivative. Because our first element, g00, is 0, the first term will disappear and we'll be just left with these three terms. And as you can see, the components are nicely matching, like x component is with dx, y component with dy, z component with dz. So this is just a divergence of b, right? And that equals to 0 according to the right hand side. And what is this? The second Maxwell's equation, which is also called the Gauss's law in magnetism. For the rest cases, I'll just show you the math right away. See if all these make sense. This time we have the curl of E. So these three can be combined into one single expression. And this is indeed the third Maxwell's equation, which is also known as Faraday's law. We just saw that these four Maxwell's equations can be simplified into just two equations if we switch to the tensor notation. It's wonderful when nature is described in simple forms. As a bonus example, pause the video for a moment and try by yourself to see what famous equation you could come up with from this equation. This is just a vector, so it should be easy. So if we expand this dj mu over dx mu, this is just a partial derivative. C rho corresponds to the j0, so I have dc rho over c dt. c is just a constant, the speed of light, so we can cancel them, right? The rest terms are just djx over dx, djy over dy, djz over dz. And this should all equal to zero according to the right hand side of this equation. Move the first term to the other side and see what you get. We have the divergence of j on the left side and minus d rho over dt on the right side. And this is a continuity equation from fluid dynamics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you liked it. And I wish you all the best.